There are times that I may slip up, won't always get it right Guarantee I'll be on top when it's game said life Get up and show up, don't ever lose your fight You watching me from the couch, at least I say I tried A long time ago, someone said this stuck with me Passion with that action will only remain a dream Keep positive, motivated people on your team Cause other negativity can kill your self-esteem Believing is powerful, but sadly so is doubt So you can choose which way you wanna go, which route The mind that controls the body can beat anybody And gotta be all in, don't treat your dreams like a hobby And if you practice on your day off, won't have an off day Talent alone won't get you there, still got a long way Gotta take big risks and big steps to strive Wanna be the winner when it's game, set, live Whoa. Awesome. Welcome everyone to Game Set Life. I'm with the legend himself, the Hall of Fame tennis pro, and of course, teacher, coach, my man, Rick Macy. Welcome back for season two of Game Set Life. Yeah, listen, season two, another place I'd rather be, me and you. So I'm ready to roll. Uh, it's been a while, but back in the saddle, and we'll do it again. Well, you know, I was thinking of you yesterday. Um, I took my son, who's 13, Masters, and he caught the golf bug. Um, and, you know, getting him the proper coach is important to me. I have, obviously, a lot of relationships with some of the best coaches in the world. Um, he's a beginner uh, with, you know, really uh, a great attitude. He, he has some of the attributes um, that you look for in uh training someone or, or looking to go to the next level, what should I be looking for? I'm a, a humble parent. I, I just want my son to enjoy the game, uh, reach a level of potential that he wants to reach. I have probably, unlike a lot of the tennis parents or golf parents, you know, no dreams of grandeur. I don't need him to be on the PGA Tour. I don't need a scholarship to college, but I really enjoy the game of golf uh, and, and utilize it in business, uh, especially early in my career. So with that in mind, what, what should I look for in a coach and how often should I have him coached? Um, first off, great question. First off, you got to have someone who is going to motivate him that has a lot of passion, uh, that believes in him. I think that's the starting point. But hitting a golf ball, you know, I think letting it happen and trying not to try is one of the most important things. But once, if you sent me a video, believe it or not, I could help out his golf swing. You know, back in oh, the day, I, was, I played. No, listen, Dave, I played golf before I even got into tennis. So the, the swing of a tennis racket on a two hander is similar to a golf swing. So you send me a video. I could definitely take the temperature. If I had to do reconstructive surgery or reprogram the reflexes, I could do it. But if you want to coach, definitely they want to motivate, inspire. But depending on what his level is, he has to have the right grip. And he has to kind of let it happen. You know what I mean? You got to kind of let it happen. But once I see the starting point, then I'll know where to dive in. Well, I really like that he had the bug and he you know, begged me. We got the, a, a set of clubs for him. And he begged me yesterday when I got home from SoFi Stadium, where our studio is and our office is, he begged me to take him to the range. And it was really fun because he kept looking at me for advice. And I said, hey, buddy, I said, I grew up poor. Right. I'm from Akron, Ohio, a single mom with six kids. I taught myself how to play golf and, you know, got down to a nine handicap, which is uh, good. A, a good handicap, but not as competitive. But but I'm a competitor. And I said, but you don't I can't teach you because I don't know the right way to play golf. Right. I, I play golf. by feel and my I use a baseball grip and, you know, a whole bunch of things that are wrong. Uh and it was really fun because I was like, you know, I need to find you someone that knows what they're talking about. And he, I think, appreciated, but was a little bit disappointed, you know, that I couldn't help him when a father and a son, you know, dad, dad's great at everything. He played college football. He's <laughs> successful. And I was like, I can't do it, man. And, and what I could do, though, is when he got frustrated, as you do your first time at the range. And I said, hey, this takes practice. And so, you know, we want to be more smooth. Uh, then, then make it happen. And as soon as you get the feel, let's remember something that feels good. That's all I can tell you. And he had improvement on his first day. And what really excited him is interesting that you said you want to find someone that believes in you, that inspires you. Because when we got his golf clubs fitted uh, over the weekend, the golf pro um, at the golf shop was so excited. He goes, I used to coach. He goes, 
I, I, you know, whoever gets to coach your son, he's such a quick learner. He's so, you know, he really can adjust quick. And it, I could see him be more enthusiastic because the golf pro was telling him, you know, how good he was at being a student uh, in the potential that he had. So I think a lot of times coaches don't realize the impact they have uh, in that positive respect. Um, what about... No, it's a game and life changer. You, I just did that this weekend for a 19-year-old, and your yeah. son's younger than that. You got to understand, people, you can, you don't know what's in a child, and you can really inspire them. And one word, David, one word can change someone's life. Yeah, and we have to balance it, when, especially at a more competitive level. And I do this in business because I have the same love and passion for the people that work with me, as you know, and you know some of them. They're just wonderful people and some of them are young they're just out of college some are you know in their early 30s and they haven't paid as much dummy tax uh, that i've paid in my life and the hardest balance that i have is uh, and as a parent when to push but sometimes if you you know what i call perturbate if marshall thurber wrote a book social deviance and you know i perturb the situation i want to bring the best out of them but sometimes you know i make a miscalculation and, and they need a hug not a kick in the ass. And, uh, you know, do you have any type of uh, advice or suggestions on that balance when, you know, you, you have someone that you, you know is tough and, you know, they may just be having a bad day, but you kick them in the butt and, you know, you can tell you're doing more damage uh, than positivity and you, you have to give them a hug. Yeah. Well, first off, I love, I love this question because that's the art of coaching. You can either make it go south in a hurry you know, and then do it again the next day. But if I feel they're going in the wrong direction, I look at it as an obligation, a responsibility to figure out a way to flip the script and make it productive. I think that's a sign of a good coach because you can't waste time. We both know you can't get it back. And so instead of battling with the person and, you know, and just, you know, they got a bad attitude or whatever, I just keep going until I can kind of change it or I might change the whole drill to make it very easy. And then all of a sudden, as you know, as human beings, they think they're doing a lot better. And then I go back to what we were doing and they do it even better. And that's taking the temperature. And that's a sign of a good coach. I mean, to sit there, especially with young kids, and just keep pounding, uh, you know, especially when they go through these phases. I mean, high school alone is very difficult, let alone, you know, them trying to perfect something like your son who got frustrated. You gotta tell them everything's difficult before it's easy. Uh, where you start, where you finish, and then you just come up with stories, which you got as many as anybody, where you saw this person, you know, and ended up in the Hall of Fame. I absolutely. I always tell them zero to one sometimes takes as much time and energy as one to 100. Uh, so let's do the work to get from zero to one. Uh, and it's the most challenging because we don't see any progress at all. And it's very frustrating because we hope and wish and want the best uh, for ourselves and expect the best of ourselves. Another uh, thing that comes up in business, uh, and especially sales, and I, I may be in the moral majority, a uh, minority of this, is that, you know, there's an energy sometimes that's just off, a bad day energetically. Things aren't going well. Nobody's answering. Everybody's rejecting us. Uh, especially in sales, we get immediate feedback uh, in a quantitative way. And I'm the first one to tell someone, they'll, they'll tell me and explain, what am I doing wrong? Every single call is bad, every meeting I have. And I said, whoa, 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 you know what you gotta do? Go to the beach. And they're like, what? I'm gonna go to the beach, it's a beautiful day. You know, I, I will tell you, you know, every day is an individual energetic experience. And, you know, instead of trying to waste your time to shift your energy or out logic this emotional slump today, let's shorten the slump and just go to the beach and enjoy yourself, come back tomorrow, do your best, learn lessons and have fun like we always do. And, uh, you know, don't worry, just let it go behind you. Do you ever do that in sports? Just, you know, the energy's off, you, you can't get it and you're just like, you know what, go to Disneyland. <laughs> well, I, I said that with Richard and he went there for a week. I thought he'd go for a day. <laughs> no, listen, I deal with the same thing. You know, I run a business, it's not just on the tennis court and, you know, Everybody says, why are, you, why are you always so positive? And I just say, well, why aren't you? You know, you got to have the ability. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, you got to have the ability to forget. It's not going to be rainbow, lollipop, and sunshine. It's not a straight line. 
there's going to be ups and downs, but you know, you got to appreciate what you have and control what you can do. You can't control how other people are going to feel. David, you can do everything amazing and it still not work out, you know, and you can't focus on that. You got to believe in yourself, pick yourself up and keep motivating yourself because failure comes in all shapes and sizes. It's going to happen all the time. It's how you deal with it and move on. Because when you're stuck in neutral, the last time I checked, you're not going anywhere. You know, put it back and drive and keep going. The only time the game's over when the clock strikes zero. Speaking of the clock striking zero, we talk a lot about youth, um, but you work with more experienced and mature people as well. You have uh, at the Rick Macy Tennis Center, every single age group, every background. It, it's just an amazing experience and community uh, of people who help each other and know people that can help each other. And our guest that we're gonna bring on next uh, has not only a ton of experience uh, and she has changed lives and continues to change lives, but also uh, like you and I, as we've had a lot more experience than than most people continue to utilize the changes of time, utilize the technology, utilize new platforms, and rebrand and re-engineer ourselves, uh, which is living proof of all the great videos I see of you uh, and the BAM uh, energy. But I rarely meet someone, Rick, and you and I fell in love the minute we met each other. We we probably were past uh, you know Ohio. Buckeyes in a past life, best friends, probably doubles partners, my guess. Uh, <laughs> you but, you know, if we if we could have a, another partner, uh, I'm telling you uh, that Dr. Forbes Riley uh, brings more energy than anyone I know. And uh, she is just a force, not only to be reckoned with, but a force that has opened so many doors for so many people. Uh, when you know, someone like her, you know, it, it wasn't as easy as it is today. It wasn't as open as it is today, especially with where she did, where she worked and what she did with the biggest people in the world. Uh, some who you know, the Jack LaLanes, the Montel Williams, uh, and exceeded over $100 million in revenue. It is an honor and a privilege to start season two with one of my favorite people on earth, a mentor and a friend, Dr. Forbes Riley. Oh, baby, don't I just love you? Hello, hello. Hi, oh, Forbes. You know, how's it, oh, you know what, I've been listening to you, Rick. I'm in awe. You know, I had a chance to meet and work with Miss Serena Williams on Home Shopping. I'm happy to tell you that story. And I've been on a lot of tennis courts. I don't hit balls to save my life, but I get them to play a lot better with my fitness product. We'll talk. Listen. <laughs> First off, it's an honor to have you. Okay, what we do with all the guests, we all have common threads, even though we do all kinds of different things. So I'm glad you're sitting down. Here's your intro. Miss Teenage New York. Oh, took God, a yeah. chance. Wait, wait, let me roll. Miss Teenage New York took a chance, did a little dance. She's a talented dame and skipped through the front door of the National Fitness Hall of Fame. I had to prance teach the open stance, be ahead of the game, and shuffle through the front door of the USPTA Hall of Fame. Akron's finest hitched a ride, tried to hide. I know it sounds lame, but little Davey Meltzer snuck in the back door of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, okay? Your spin gym made people a lot looser, and they felt even better with your power juicer. Serena had to spin, was always in the gym, Okay, brings the juice and the power, and she eliminated a lot of people in less than an hour. David gets out of the shower. He loves to empower. He knows how to win with no spin. He's a living Zeus. And when he was a football agent, he hung out with the original juice. Okay, you're dubbed the queen of pitch. The phenom maker is my niche. David's dad played baseball, so I guess that makes him a son of son of a pitch. All right, on your show, welcome, Orly, uh, Forbes. It's such an honor to have you. That's your intro. Now we can get rolling. <laughs> you just your calling, dude. You put a beat to that stuff, and you could have a whole new career, my friend. That was his oh, no. I had to add a beat. When I saw and I studied everything, and I saw your intro, and you still got the shuffle and the shake and the bake, I love it. So it's an honor to have you. 
Wow, David, did you know that was coming? We uh, This is season two, so we kind of picked up on the fact that this man is more interested than interesting, uh, like you, which makes him a great coach, uh, someone that can truly change lives by bringing the best out of them, but also a mentor because just like you, Rick Macy's done it himself. So you can give the directions uh, to people as well, besides bringing the best out of them. And you've done so much in your career, but what to me is most remarkable is what you're doing today. Both of us working with our, our daughters as well, which brings an exponential amplified joy uh, to, to, to what we do, activity to make money. Um, but starting off there, there is a transition from being the star to making stars. And Rick is the phenom maker. Um, and so are you. And I'm trying to be. I'm following in your footsteps to build as many phenomenal people in the world. And I have some potential in doing so. Wh where do you see that transition? Because not everybody can be great at what they do and then help others be great as well. Where is that characteristic within your personality that has enabled you to help so many thousands of people now do what you were able to do uh, in your career? You know, I'm so glad I've lived to this age. I just celebrated a birthday and it's an interesting question. What day is your birthday, first of all? 25th. I'm okay. actually of, of March. I'm sorry, of April. April, April yeah. So I've been celebrating all month. It's, I'm just coming over. It's just May, right? It's just coming to a wind down. We'll send you. We'll send you a Rick Macy birthday package. So we're not too late. We're good. Well, say, but you know what's funny? Because I use my birthday every year to raise money for charity, and this year was a charity out of South Africa that houses um, victims of sex and human trafficking. And it was beautiful. We've been Feed America for years. And my daughter asked me the same question. She's like, Mom, this is the time to celebrate you. Why are you using it to celebrate others? And I thought, because I can. And I didn't grow up being able to do any of this. And it was a very lonely, awkward little childhood that I had. And I talk about this a lot. But there was something that I'm an actress. In fact, we're going to celebrate because for my birthday, it's such a beautiful manifestation. I wanted to star in a movie. I haven't done one in a while. Guess what, David? I booked on my birthday. Uh, a starring role with Cynthia Rothrock, Billy Blanks, and Don the Dragon Wilson in an action, I'm a martial artist, in an action Western picture shooting in Tucson in October. You know, you guys, if you believe in manifestation wholeheartedly and things appear, in my world, we don't say, oh my God, can you believe it? We say, as expected, as expected. Okay. And it's miracle, it's totally crazy. But what happened for me was as an actress, you suffered a lot of rejection. That was the worst combination for someone like me who was already introverted, trying to please everybody. And I would get rejected day in and day out because you go on five or 10 auditions a day, you're bound to get rejected, even if you're good. And it just fed a very deep insecurity in me. And then finally, I hit, I hit my stride. I'm doing infomercials, live home shopping. I can pitch like nobody's business. I didn't even know how I learned it. Body by Jake found me at a, at a meeting, said, oh my God, you're gonna make me a lot of money. We did a Fox network together where we created the concept of selling fitness on television that he sold to Fox for $500 million in 1995. Great, so I'm doing all of that. One day I get a, a, a deal, I bring it to my agent because that's what you're supposed to do. And I'm just had my babies, I'm in my early 40s. It was a $100,000 contract for two days worth of work. Ka ching right? I give it to my agent, two days later, it's like, hey, I've got some good news and some bad news. I'm like, all right. Yeah, the good news is they love you. And I'm like, of course they do, I'm brilliant. The bad news? They want a younger, less expensive version of you. Okay, and I found it for them. I'm a good agent. Well, not my agent anymore. No, 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 the good part is they want you to teach her how to pitch. And I said, wait, let me look out the window. No, there's no pigs flying. I'm not, and I said some very nasty words. I don't know if I really said them, but I thought them. And I <laughs> said to myself, I'm not teaching shit to anybody. This is the... I have the best life. I'm going to keep it all to myself and do it. And I did for the next 10 or 15 years. And then something happened. COVID happened. My daughter went from being a baby in diapers to a young businesswoman who said, mom, you know, why don't you really coach and teach what you do? Online is going to blow up. I said, first of all, I don't know how to do this internet thing. I do live. And she's like, I can fix that for you. I can build your back end. And I'm like, no, yeah, common yeah. Threat. <laughs> right. I know. And we did. And David, we sat in a room for a couple of weeks just as COVID was happening. And we created this concept of how I would do this online. And we launched on day one. Now, I, I've watched a lot of my friends blow up their businesses. I never could figure out the whole back end. 
I wake up the next morning after my first little tiny webinar with 26 people in it. And there's a thing that says 25K. And I looked at McKenna and I said, what does the K stand for? It's like, mom, you sold everybody but one person last night. You made $25,000 last night. I'm like, we did what? <laughs> we did that every week for four weeks. It turned into 102K. And we've been doing that now. We have 18,000 students. So David, I've always wanted to teach what I do, but I was stubborn and selfish and, and hurt. And so I kept it all to myself. And in the last couple of years, we now have 18,000 students. And the best student that I've got is my beautiful 20-year-old daughter who crushed a summit the other day and sold more on that summit of her training. She has a cute course, I think, um, Rick, that you will like called GSD. It's called Get Shit Done. She outsold me, Sharon Lecter, Elena Cardone, and Stormy Wellington all combined. So I'm in it to win it. I want my students to way outshine me. And there's a beautiful sense of pride, but I don't think I would have known that until I became a mom, until I watched other little creatures that I brought into this world, some I've been a mother to that I didn't give birth to, excel. And now I understand for the first time in my life the true definition of happiness. That's, that's awesome. No, no, that's, that's, that's a true coach right there, you know, and giving that passion and knowledge to others and letting them shine, you know, all roads lead back to Forbes. But before I go any further, let me back the truck up to Long Island, New York. Your dad was an inventor. I want you to tell the world how this started, Miss Teenage New York. Just start from the beginning. I know you kind of dabbled a little bit, but back the truck up and start from the beginning and the rest is history. Oh, Rick, I'm going to bring you with me because you are the best wingman I've ever met. David, you're good, but he's like, dang. That's why I, I have him. <laughs> I, can I can definitely wing it, okay? In, in a nutshell, I grew up, I was a very ugly, goofy little kid. And I show this every Sunday. I still do this at five o'clock. I do a thing called Pitch Secrets Masterclass. I do it live. I charge a whopping $19. Feel free to take that link, Nick, and stick it up there somewhere because I'd love people to come and experience two hours live on a Zoom call. I give great Zoom. And I show a picture, I had a weird mouth and so when I was a kid, I was put in braces from the time I was eight to 16. And for two years, I had a thing in my mouth. I heard her speak and I didn't have any friends because no one could understand a word I was saying. I was overweight, fast food came out. I had big frizzy hair. My mom was overweight and we were weird. And, we were the, and then I broke my nose and I had a weird nose for all these years. Well, one day, my beautiful dad, who's a magician, inventor, he built printing presses and a dreamer. And he had this garage full of ideas and I remember I was eight years old and I sat in the garage. I said, dad, how do I get my, oh, no, he said to me, kiddo, how do I get my inventions out to the world? And I'm like, dad, I have no idea. I'm eight. Ironically, I would spend most of my life getting other inventors on television, on home shopping, on infomercials and, and living. My dad passed away almost 23 years ago. I couldn't do anything for him. And that hurt my heart because he was the coolest guy in the whole world. And uh, one day in June, Oh, I was 15 years old to get a phone call. Your dad's been in a really bad accident. He had one of those giant printing presses that he slipped and he cut off the whole front of his hand. And he would spend the next three years, my entire high school in a hospital, 15 operations to rebuild his hand. And, you know, I teach this and I know both of you live this, but that life happens for you, not to you. Going through it, I could never have seen that. But the way it went down is why I'm here. Because at that moment, one, we were broke. My mom says, we've got no money for college. I'm so sorry. And it's like, that's all I want. What? And she said, well, there's a beauty pageant happening. I'm like, and she looked at me and she's like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> that moment, no, but that moment when my mother agreed with me that I wasn't pretty hurt so bad because I kept thinking maybe I was wrong, you know? No, I was not anywhere close to Cinderella or Brady Bunch. Marsha, Marsha was so cute until she got a broken nose and then she didn't go to the prom. Well, here's the funny thing. And this is really important for everyone listening to this. Dream it, believe it, and achieve it. Sounds like a magnet on your fridge, right? Unless you dream it, believe it, and achieve it. So my, my mom said, there's a scholarship to college in this pageant, but you can't enter it. My dad's doctor overheard this conversation. So when you've got an idea, you start talking about it. That's the believe part. And he turned to us and said, you know what, guys? I'm going to fix your daughter's nose. Now, that's not a big thing in the whole scheme. Well, it was for me. And if I show you the photos, I went from being this ugly kid. I woke up a couple of days later and there was like this cute nose. But you could see my eyes and you could see my smile. And somehow I looked at that girl in the mirror and she looked back at me and she said, we're kind of cute. Let's go for it. 
Because if we don't, we're not going to amount to anything. And I had my dad, I remember with big bandage on his hand, we drove to the first meeting, there were 500 girls there. And I said, one of these little girls is gonna be on TV with Bob Hope and NBC and it's gonna be me. And all I can tell you is I had that thought in my head because not for me, but I needed the scholarship to prove to my parents that their, their kid was gonna be something. And I won and I won against all odds. I mean, I didn't look like the other girls, I had a hand-me-down bridesmaids dress, but I, there's a photo of me that I'm looking at the judges and I'm thinking, See that guy over there? My dad, he deserves to win and I'm gonna do this for him right now. And I did. Now, the crazy thing about that, I got to Tulsa, Oklahoma with Bob Hope and NBC and all of that. Guys, it was the worst week of my life. And I don't know if you've ever coached somebody who got what they wanted and it didn't turn out that way. You know, you got that Heisman Trophy guy who just can't play in the NFL. It's like, damn, that didn't work out so good. What lesson did I learn? Well, I, they were so prejudiced against me Y'all have the funniest accent I ever heard. And I'm thinking, the freak you talking about? I have an accent. It's how we talk in Long Island. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have, and, and then I'm Jewish. They never heard of Jews back in 1977 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> and the horns. How come all the Jews in my town are rich? What is a bagel? I'm like, oh my God. It was, it was, it was bad. And as a 16-year-old, I was not equipped to handle that. But you know what it taught me? When I got off to college, and I'll end the story here, there it was 1977. There was a black, and act, a black and a white acting group at my school. And I didn't grow up like that. And I thought, this is wrong. And if something's wrong and you don't do anything about it, it's still wrong. And so I created a musical. I did this musical called The Me Nobody Knows, set in urban New York with black, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese, didn't matter. And we did this groundbreaking musical. Do you know that was 38 years ago? I just had a representative from the school six months ago take me out to lunch and hand me the clippings of the newspaper articles written at that time as a thank you. So life happens for you, not to you. And when I think of you, for, it's amazing because it, it happens through you, uh, which is the next level beyond for you and it is happening through you now. Maybe the old Forbes, it happened to you uh, and for you, but today it happens through you. You have gone from a great celebrity to a celebrant, um, and it's a, a huge honor. Now you have, you know, these different courses. One's a media mastery training course. One is about success in general for everyone in the world. How to what I say five levels of attention to do, say, think, believe, and feel your success, uh, and clear what is interfering with it. Um, and then, of course, the pit secrets is what you're known for. If anybody in the world, you know, I, I have been blessed, Rick. I don't know if you know this, but I was and still am the executive producer of Entrepreneur's Elevator Pitch. Uh, but it was more about funding. And it really drove me crazy because every funding show, Shark Tank, Dragon's Den, Elevator Pitch, a, a third of the people get funded. A third of the third of the people actually get money. And a third of the third of the third of the people actually get what they were promised in money. And none of them learn how to truly pitch for funding because it's a TV show. So I created Two Minute Drill, and we're in season five, uh, and we are hoping that Forbes can be a, a judge on that show as well. We have everyone from Junior Achievement, Tech Stars, to MasterCard and Stripe, each have their own episodes and their own competitions, and the finalists come on. But at least we can teach people to pitch remotely, uh, just the pitch. And whether you're getting your kid to eat broccoli or a multi-million dollar deal, there's some things that everyone should learn. And if you haven't, you haven't gone to an after class with Forbes Riley, you're missing out in life, uh, no matter who you are and what you are um, in, as well. Now, I also read your newsletter, and that's where I've seen a great transformation and great branding. I was just curious, in that newsletter, you know, for you, uh, you know, what is your mission because it's it's different than what most people would think, and I highly encourage people to sign up for it. It's a Forbes Friday Factory newsletter. Give us a little bit of background on the newsletter of the amplification of content in that newsletter. You know, and Nick, at some point, Rick, you and I will get to talk off camera because David's not going to let us talk. I know that. <laughs> Here's the thing. When you've got three profound people, it's really hard to get all this jammed in here. I love that you read my newsletter. Oh, my gosh. You know, there's only a couple of newsletters that I read every, every week that I love looking forward to. So I said to myself, this is, by the way, this is one of the secrets to pitching. Number one, stop telling people what they need. 
Okay, and you all do this. You get a new, new. oh, you need these new glasses and you need this new iPhone and you need this new, no. No one ever bought anything that they needed. They only buy what they want, okay? It's really important to know that. Your job is not to tell us about a product. Your job, if you've got something wonderful, is to get us to want what you have. And so the same thing with newsletter. What do people want from Forbes writing? And I always think about that. You know, whenever I pitch any product, and I think this is groundbreaking for everybody, and it comes from my dad being a magician. I learned a couple of things. Magic tricks are the hardest thing to sell. Not the trick in the store, but the fact that I'm going to make a dove appear. I have to sell you into that whole notion. So number one, you begin with the end in mind. I, when I pitch, I want a yes all the time. That's all I want is a yes. So Rick, I don't think you've ever seen me do this. If I said, do you want to see something cool? Rick, what do you say? I want to see something cool. Yeah. <laughs> you say yes. And that's a great question. No one's ever said no. I don't. So as soon as you say that, I would say to you, great. You know what? I created the greatest fitness product on the planet. Want to see it? Absolutely. Of course, you're going to say yes. Two yeses. You get a third one. You got a, You got somebody handing you their credit card. And then I would say, I would literally put this on his thumbs and I'd make him do this. And his reaction, like everyone else's, is like, including Serena, it's like, oh my gosh, this feels so cool. You know, I, and then I don't say a word. I let them tell me, I could use this at the office. Oh my gosh, this feels so good. I could blah, blah, blah. And this is how it happens. If I'm going to also pitch you, I might say to you, rather than talk about a product, I'm going to have you lift up your right arm. Everybody lift up their right arm. Is it nice and tight underneath? Come on, guys. Come on, David. Let me see. Nice and tight. Because if it's tight, I'll tell you what, especially if you're a woman, though, you're taking the sweater off this summer. And if you've got a saggy arm, you know what happens? You lose your confidence. And of all the things I see, especially in women, makes me very sad. I want to see a world full of very confident women, young, middle-aged, and seasoned. And I'm going to tell you, you do this for five minutes a day, and I know you've got five minutes, and you do this because it spins so fast. These are 63-year-old arms, and I'll tell you what, they're as hard as rocks, and I don't have to lift the weight. All of a sudden, you're all saying, wait, I want that spin gym. Where do I go to get that thing? And that's the energy that you want when you pitch somebody. Too often, David, and I know you see it because I also get pitched every day. People come in and go, I've got this. I do this. And you're like, whoa, wait a second. I don't even understand what the context is yet. I don't need to be yelled at about facts and data. Here's all I want to know, especially in investors. And I teach this all the time. As an investor, newsflash, I don't care what you're selling. I care that I'm going to get my money back. I care that you're the right person to do it. Isn't that true? Yeah. Right. And they'll, they'll spend all their time going, look, I've got this amazing new frame in it. Blah, blah, blah. No, I got that you can do that. Are you the person to sell it? Are we going to make our money back? Do I want to be in business with you? Are you human enough to have a conversation with me? Do you even know what color? If I can close your eyes, did you even look and see what I'm wearing? Most people come in and this pitch thing is something other than themselves. And it breaks my heart. Pitch voice. Hi, David. My name is Forbes Riley. And I've got something to show. I'm sorry. Is that what you saw in an old movie somewhere? Some from used car salesman? Because it's not $100 million, by the way, which David, I said. But I've grossed $2.5 billion. Yeah. What I've done is phenomenal. And most of it's been through a television camera. And, you know, it's interesting that the guy wanted me and I decided not to teach this until now because a lot of people say, well, Forbes, how come I haven't heard about you doing this? I said, because most of my life I was too busy doing it and it paid really well. And I've got some news flashes for you. Jack LaLanne Juicer. That was an infomercial that I did with Jack LaLanne. He was 88, his wife, Elaine. We spent eight years together working and doing a lot of shows, but that one conversation, I'm wearing a cute little red top. I just given birth to my babies and I met them for the first time in Toronto. We spoke for a half a day, that one conversation was such a beautiful pitch that it ran for eight years in 80 countries. That one show grossed a billion dollars in sales. But the cool thing for everybody under the age of 12 or 20 or whatever who don't know who he was, just wait, because Mark Wahlberg just signed to play him in a movie. Wow. I know, right? Always a ripple. Always a ripple. Awesome. Rick, you want to bring this uh, plane home? Yeah, I'll, I'll land the plane. First off, you said something a while back about expecting it and not hoping it. I love that. You're a true coach. You know, just your your mindset. You look at the world through a different lens. You know, I think there's so many gold nuggets that you threw out there. Everybody that watches this is going to be blown away. I want to thank you so much for being on Game Set Life. Oh, uh, well, you are just very sweet. I will tell you what, as a coach, I know, coaches, I think, are very special people. Coaches see insight for others. 
And I talk about the Serena story. So I'll come back full circle to you, but Serena was the very first one to ever let me understand this. I was already selling a lot of product. I come from a lone solopreneur mindset. I didn't have a lot of people, never worked in a corporation. I'm that maverick, right? I also sucked at sports. If you throw a ball at me, I run. And so Serena and I are doing a cool towel. I don't know if you've ever seen those, where you take a towel, you snap it, it gets cold. Well, I got brought in to, because they couldn't sell any on home shopping. It just wasn't working. They brought me in. I write a lot of pitches for a lot of big people. And I said, it's a magic trick, guys. The reason it's not selling is nobody believes that it's cold. I touch it that. So I brought in a, a heat gun and a bowl of hot water. And we dunked it in there. We snapped it three times. Heat gun said 200 degrees, 198, 90, oh, 100, 97, 96. By the time it got to 50, the phones went nuts. And we sold over $55 million worth of cool towels. So I said to Serena, there's two things that I would like. Well, three things. One, I want you to spin him with me and I have that great photo. But two, I said, do you think we could ever hit a tennis ball together? Biggest mistake I've ever made. That ball comes so fast that I thought if I don't put the racket right here, it's going to hit my racket and break my arm. <laughs> but I said to her, I said, I'm so bad at this. She said, no, you're not. She said, how much time have you spent practicing? I'm like, I don't. I played in high school. She said, how can you expect to be good if you don't practice? So that's my thing to you guys in pitching. How can you expect to be a good pitcher if you don't pitch every day? If you don't practice, you know your product, your service, but are you pitching every day because it's a skill? And the final one was, she said she had five coaches. She had a fitness coach, a finance coach, a fashion coach, a food coach, and a tennis coach. And I'm young, I'm naive. I'm like, aren't you the best tennis player in the world? Why would you need a coach? And she's like, Look, it's like I've never played on the team. I've never had a coach. She said, oh, you're missing out. She said, when I'll be hitting, all of a sudden, my, my, they won't go where I want them to go. And I'll be looking all over like entrepreneurs do. How do I fix this? What's wrong with me? Maybe it is me. Maybe the ball is bad. And my coach will walk out of the stands. And she said, my coach doesn't even play tennis anymore. I was like, really? My coach walks out, says, pick up your elbow. And all of a sudden, my shots land exactly where they're supposed to. A coach is someone who sees the entire world that you're playing in better than you do because she's not in it. And that Absolutely. changed her but David, the moral of the story about the towel, I'm glad you didn't throw in the towel. That's number one. And she, <laughs> listen, Serena, when she was little, I mean, she was she was a prankster. I'd say run, and she'd go, you run. But she gave me that same look you saw at the U.S. Open, and that young lady's wired very, very different. So I'm glad that we got something in common with Serena. Well, That's we so all have something in common because not only are you both great celebrities, you're one of the greatest celebrants that I know just empowering uh, so many people changing the world. And at the very least planting seeds, as Dennis Waitley says under trees that we may never sit under. We don't even know because of social media and because of your daughter, you don't even know the millions of people, uh, the lives that you've changed. And that's what I love about the open-mindedness of both Rick Macy and Dr. Forbes Riley, who better come back and visit us more often. She is gorgeous inside and out. I am one of your biggest fans. Thank you for gracing us today, my love. Oh, it's been such an honor. Rick, I'm going to have you on my podcast as well. I have a radio show every Wednesday live around the world. And right, we're, I challenge you to bring McKenna on. Where do you there you go. Go. Listen, we're going to barter something. You're going to send me this spin, Jim. I'm going to send you a hoodie. So we're going to barter here. David, <laughs> you heard it right here. He just pitched yeah. me and I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you for joining us. You. <laughs> You're awesome. ForbesRiley.com. Uh, sign up for multiple classes and her daughter's class as well. Um, changing the world. One of the greatest skills, one of the greatest knowledge-based things you can do is to learn how to share a vision, both with credibility and emotional connection. And Forbes Riley not only does it the best, she can teach you as well to be the best. Just like my friend, Rick Macy, on the court, Forbes Riley is doing it off the court. Okay, as we always conclude, and look at our time. We are so close, right on time. What is your takeaway of the day from spending a good half hour with this genius, Forbes Riley? Listen, David, there's so many layers uh, to this amazing lady, but the energy, the passion, the drive, you know what I mean? She ran into many walls. And look, even at this stage of the game, she's a leader in the clubhouse. It's not over till you stop. It's not over till you say it's over, okay? Everybody looks at now, but how she got to here and everything she's done through her lives, it just should inspire people. Keep going, keep going, keep going. 
I mean, but her passion and energy and positive attitude, uh, she just willed it to happen. And the more she heard no, it made her more determined. Where a lot of people, when you hear no, they kind of back up. With her, it made her say, I'm going to go even harder. And I love her attitude. Yeah, and the attitude was my takeaway as well. The spirit of excellence, that energy and passion that you talk about, she has the same desire as many of your great athletes yeah. and my great athletes have, which is a desire that they must be what they can be. And now through humility and vulnerability, and we saw the emotion as she talked about her mom and her dad and her daughter uh, really meant a lot to me that yeah. not only does she have the desire to be the best that she can be, the most that she can be, but now she wants to bring that out in others. And she has the knowledge like you do uh, by being more interested and interesting, by being a student of what you do for so long to be able, if you are a student, the longer you do it, the more it'll tell you its secrets. She talks about the secrets of the pitch, the way you talk about the secret of the serve. And uh, I'm just blessed to be in both of your presence. Hey, what a great start to season two. Uh, we're moving this show. We're going to be uh, giving some great content on TV, movies. Uh, there's no stopping the Eminem brothers here in past lives. The two Buckeyes, Macy and Meltzer, thank you for joining us on Game Set Life. See you soon, Dave. See you soon, my friend. All right, Nick, be more interested than interesting. Be kind to your future self. Email me if you like uh, anything at all, david at dmeltzer.com. As always, I'll sign a book, send it to you, pay for shipping and the book. One of the few people to do so. Go ahead. Let's hit it, Nick. There are times that I may slip up, won't we'll always get it right Guarantee I'll be on top when it's game said life Get up and show up, don't ever lose your fight You watching me from the couch, at least I say I tried A long time ago, someone said this stuck with me Passion with that action will only remain a dream Keep positive, motivated people on your team Cause other negativity can kill your self-esteem Believing is powerful, but sadly so is doubt So you can choose which way you wanna go, which route The mind that controls the body can beat anybody and gotta be all in, don't treat your dreams like a hobby And if you practice on your day off, won't have an off day Talent alone won't get you there, still got a long way Gotta take big risks and big steps to strive Wanna be the winner when it's game set live Whoa